With all the overwhelming evidence, why isn't Trump arrested? It's not actually overwhelming yet. That's the issue. You may see it as overwhelming. But those that are building the case have not yet made the determination that it is sufficient to convict on all alleged crimes for which they are trying to prosecute. Have you by chance noticed that there are two classes of people? Those that go to jail and those who don't. Trump like most politicians, celebrities and super rich is mostly immune to the law. They can get away with pretty much anything. Lawsuits pearl and bead off them like water would off a duck. You however you are in the other class. Tough luck. Others have touched on this some. But I'll try to add some additional detail. Trump has not been arrested yet because the prosecution is still building its case. They seized at least 10 boxes of documents. Many of which are likely very dense. And it is going to take a while to go through them. As a prosecutor, you need to make sure you understand all the relevant facts before you press charges because you never know when something may come out that completely blows up your case. In those documents, there could, for example, be a document or letter dated Jan. 1. 2021 signed by Trump announcing that he declassified all materials in the boxes. This is obviously highly unlikely and borderline laughable. But bear with me. Trump only had the ability to declassify the documents when he was a sitting president. The moment Biden took office, he lost that power. So, setting aside the fact that there was a protocol Trump should have followed to declassify the documents, evidence like that could really muck up the case. And the DOJ can't afford that with stakes as high as these. Indicting a former president has never happened in the history of our country. If the DOJ decides to press charges, the case must be ironclad. On top of that, investigators are basically at a standstill because a judge granted Trump's request to appoint a special master, SM which is basically an independent third party who will review certain documents and advise the court on whether they are protected under executive privilege. Certain communications between Trump and his advisors during his presidency, or attorney-client privilege, communications between Trump and his lawyers. If the documents fall under either of these categories, then they must be removed from the materials the investigators review during their investigation. This process is going to draw out the investigation even longer because where the documents are classified, they need to find an SM that both parties can agree on and who has the clearance level to review the documents. Executive privilege is also not a particularly well-defined concept. And so I suspect there will be quite a bit of back and forth between the lawyers over these determinations, which will draw out the process even more. TL. Dr. Trump hasn't been arrested yet because there are a lot of documents for investigators to review. And a judge has now effectively put the investigation on hold for the near future. It takes time. The DOJ will want to build an ironclad case before charging him. What people are missing here is the consequence of arresting him but not getting a conviction. Imagine the GOP's glee when they suddenly get a precedent to arrest former presidents on shaky grounds. The rich don't go to prison in America. Neither do the powerful. He is both. Emo he should be subject to the law and due process. But there are historical consequences if he were to get arrested. It will alter our republic in a way that can't be reversed. I'm only using the downfall of the Roman Republic as an example. For the 150 years leading up to Julius Caesar, the republic was modified in similar ways to today. Only small modifications here and there where new norms are created. The theme of these modifications is the accumulation of power of certain people, cliques, and erosion of power in the traditional institution. 
What follows is a period of increasing strife, uncertainty. So over the course of like 80 years, various strong man will pop up, try something and fail, but each of them gets close and closer to a tyrant. The last failure was Julius Caesar, who some may argue achieved this tyrant status. If it's considered the end goal, in my book he failed cause he got killed. It's his heir, Octavian, known as Augustus in the Bible, who achieved tyrant status. He became the first Roman emperor and that civilization officially entered the emperor phase which is actually the default form of human civilization. Another interesting tidbit about how these tyrants work is that they follow the same playbook, too play on the masses' emotions to accumulate their power. This includes appearing charismatic and strong, appeal to the uneducated masses, and some variation of ethnic, national pride. This last point is quite an appealing strategy to pander to the masses it validates the masses. That they should feel special at no effort from themselves. In that they should just feel special about being born into whatever privileged group they were born in. What average person wouldn't like that message? So now we compare this to the Trump situation. His presidency follows this trajectory. He is a strong man who failed. For sure. But my argument is that what happens next has great implications to how our society will be. Sanction Trump too little. It will facilitate more strong men in the near future to push the boundaries a bit further. As the risk is reduced, sanction Trump too much. It makes whatever future sitting president increase their fear in losing power. It will encourage them to take more drastic measures to ensure a soft landing when their term expires and take away attention from running our country. Such measures, off the top of my head, may include influencing personnel changes in the investigative arms of the state. A hypothetical exiting president who knows he will be arrested, hanged as soon as his term expires, will take even more drastic measures, such as breaking the our historical tradition of peaceful transfer of power. I see the democracy of South Korea as an example of a government that is a bit further along in this race to become a tyrant state. A number of excited presidents are subsequently investigated and jailed for corruption. That could be us in 30 years. My own hot take on all this is that our current form of government, as imperfect as it is, is a wonderful thing for the very fact that it doesn't default into the low energy state of authoritarianism. By definition, this takes a lot of work to keep functioning the way it is or perhaps improve. This work has to be done by all of us subject to its rule, as we are all benefiting from it. When enough people believe that this work is no longer worthwhile to put in, disillusioned, then someone else will fill that energy gap. It will be a strong man who puts that work into governing all of us with his own interest at heart. Of course. Money bag money bag money bag money bag money bag money bag. No one wants to ruin their career by arresting a former president and putting him on trial unless they have enough evidence for a conviction. VTW. I can say that I 100% believe there is no way it will go to trial. I think Trump's lawyers will keep this going as long as possible until he either dies or one of his lackeys becomes president and gives him a pardon. If they do it wrong and he ends up being exonerated through technical issues, he can never be charged again for the same charge due to our double jeopardy laws. They want to make sure it sticks. As for arresting him, he'll be out on bail ASAP and then he can exercise his right to a speedy trial and force them to go to court before they're ready. It's taking a long time because the DOJ has one shot at this. They've been collecting evidence for years and still haven't moved to arrest him because it's all a political show and word, legal games. They don't actually have anything they can pin on him. 
because there is zero accountability for politicians. This is why we need term limits. After a while these power brokers get so entrenched that they are untouchable. Anyone else with a comparable collection of stolen secret documents would be in jail. It looks bad for the US and sets precedent that it's easy to throw a president in jail BC you don't like their politics. Perspective from a non-American. The FBI is starting to look like a group of tryhards at this point. Only because all of the previous accusations have fallen through. I hope that the truth prevails and America can move on. Everyone is equal under the law. Or that's what we're told. What overwhelming evidence? What crime? Are you privy to something the rest of us are not? Because you are no one. No offense. Majority of average people are no ones on wider picture and laws are much more direct for us. But Trump is kinda famous and has a huge cult following. So rock solid case is needed and even then it's not certain will he end up in jail or drag the court case until his passing. Because he has money and donators for it. Money talks and BS walks no matter what political side you're on. Where's the overwhelming evidence? Oh stop it Hillary. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Aircast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.